Hello, I am Mark. Just Mark. And, as odds would have it, I'm guessing you don't care. And no hard feelings, this is the internet. I probably don't know you, and you probably don't know me. But you're here anyways. Which is exactly what I want to talk about today. Stick around and I'll give you my guess as to why you are here. In this video, I will tell you how I went from Just Mark to the various characters that I play on this channel. And if you so please, I will walk you through a process of creating your very own character. But not just any character. A character you can truly relate to. One that's not just created by you and controlled by you, but independent of you. A part of you, but somehow even better than you already are. Not exactly a lie, but not entirely the truth either. My lords and ladies, how to create a character. My first guess as to why I think you're here is that it seemed pretty cool. And if there's a character you look up to, odds are they're also pretty cool and relatable somehow. Maybe even they remind you of yourself. On this channel, I play three main characters, which I have nicknamed Minstrel, Messenger, and Monarch, respectively. All of them hail from a generic medieval fantasy world. Minstrel is a musician that wants to tell the tales of old. Messenger serves in his lord's army and wants to do meaningful work. Monarch is a well-intentioned king that wants to motivate his people to prosperity. I tell you this because each of these characters represents a different side of Mark. The part that enjoys music and storytelling, fighting and servanthood, mentorship and leadership, respectively. This is the secret to character creation, in my humble opinion. I'm by no means an expert but I have learned quite a bit casually over the years. The secret is this. Start with a part of yourself that you want to emphasize, and then answer questions about your character based on what that part of yourself would say. In my case, I'll be calling these three parts the soldier, poet, and king. Let's start with the easy questions, shall we? My second guess as to why you're still here is the excitement of creating something new. Starting from the ground up and building a person with potential for great things. And for this, we need a foundation. The first thing one must decide when creating a character is the barebone basics. What and where questions. Answer yourself questions like these. Where is my character from? What time period does my character live in? What does my character look like? What does my character sound like? What is my character wearing? What can my character do? very physical and concrete attributes. Keep it simple at first, and something that genuinely interests you. For example, I like the medieval ages, knights and stuff, so it was kind of a no-brainer that I would place my characters in the medieval ages. The poet side of me is obviously the minstrel, the soldier is obviously going to be a knight, and the king was a medieval lord of sorts. Their attire was basically what I had on hand that was semi-period appropriate, but also what I thought that part of me would enjoy wearing. The minstrel has flowy eye-catching clothes, messenger has a practical tunic, and monarch has fancy upper-class garb. We'll get into costume design in detail a little bit later, but for now let's move on to the harder questions. The third guess as to why you clicked on this video is something deeper, and that is understanding of what makes a person tick, the inner mechanisms going on beneath the surface, why they do what they do, and even introspection into your personal motivations. This is where the machine comes to life. The second set of things to ask is why and how questions. These are abstract and very ethereal. Questions like, why does my character want what they want? Why is my character afraid of what they're afraid of? Why can't my character achieve its goals? Why does my character care in the first place? How does my character handle problems? How does my character handle success? How is my character doing, on the surface and underneath? It requires some deep introspection. You must answer the questions for yourself first. When you've done that, you really don't have much further to go. At their core, all my characters all answer the why questions in the same way. But the difference manifests itself in the how. For example, I want to help people. To be important somehow. To impact people's lives in a meaningful way. I'm afraid of either being rejected by the people that I wish to help, not doing a good job, or being otherwise unimportant. The poet wants to impact people through music, giving them a way of processing their own emotions, or feeling the things they wish to fear, such as joy, sorrow, adventure. But fear is not being able to express the beauty that he sees in the world. The soldier wants to protect people, helping their practical needs, defeating evil, and letting good prosper. But fear is not being useful practical sense, or good enough to accomplish these tasks. The king is somewhere in the middle, wanting to help people's practical needs through mentorship and helping them 
become the person they want to be, but fears the impossibility of pleasing everyone. It's also very important to include character flaws, even more so than strengths. Flaws are what makes your character human, and in my case, I can be rather prideful, unsympathetic, or fake, which I applied to the poet, soldier, and king, respectively. The poet is full of himself, the warrior is bitter, the king is always putting on front. Once you've answered all these questions, and hopefully many more besides, you will start to know your character a lot better. Feel free to change your answers as much as you wish until you have something which you're satisfied and genuinely interested in. Now, with our roadmap, we can start putting it all together. My fourth guess as to why you clicked on this video in particular is that you have all the other steps down, easy money, but you don't know how to combine it all into one fleshed out character. The way to do this is by visualizing it. A good character will have clothing that reflects their personality in some way. If this character is going to be for D&D, a video game, or a book, all you need is the drawing implement of your choice. But if it's for LARP acting or cosplay, you'll need significantly more than a pencil. In my case, I'm going to be making a costume. I'm by no means a professional cosplayer, but if you want to find out how to make a really good costume, there's a hundred other videos on YouTube that you can go watch. But as for me, here's what I threw together and bought. Probably the hardest question to answer is, where do I even start? First place I always go is Google Images. Look up what a poet, soldier, or king even looks like. When that inevitably fails, I end up going to Pinterest, and once I found a group of images I like, I kind of cherry pick what I like about them, put them all together into one costume. For example, I really love the medieval hoods and fancy hats, drawstring shirts, fancy coats, and belted tunics. As a general statement, I do most of my fabric shopping from Joann's, because they have a lot of options, and I usually don't know what I want until I'm holding it in my hands. For Minstrel, I wanted him to look outgoing and eye-catching. Somewhat poor, but still enough to get by. I started with this excellent drawstring shirt, which was purchased online, as well as a deep blue hood. Together, they combined to make a simple but clear medieval look. Not too fancy, but not too shabby either. Then I went to make pants. For this, I used a simple brown fabric cut into two pant legs. However, this was too small and ended up breaking, so I no longer wear them around. Instead, I just used the same black sweatpants as Messenger. For the hat, I wanted feathers for extravagance and an emblem for recognizability. The hat I got from Goodwill. I sewed a button on the side to get the folded look and display the emblem. I put the feathers on the other side to stand tall and proud, showing off his prideful nature. For his cape, I chose red for a few reasons. One, it contrasted with the blue to be more eye-catching. Two, I like red. Three, the green screen still works. Four, red and gold pair well. I have this excellent golden clasp that, again, twinges on expensive while still feeling poor due to how it's attached. Since this is my main character, I spent the most time with this costume. For Messenger, I wanted him to be essentially a blank slate. Head down, do what you're told, straightforward. He is a messenger in times of peace, and a warrior in times of war. So his costume had to accommodate both. I like the black and red combination, so I wore black sweatpants and a black long sleeve shirt. These are both modern because you can't really tell when I'm wearing the full outfit. The tunic is a simple rectangle with a head slot cut out and a belt tied around it. This was made to match my LARP sword. The gloves I bought on Amazon. The hood is actually left over from a cloak I made for a different project. I spent much more time on the scroll. He is, after all, a messenger. And a messenger needs a prop. I started by cutting two wooden dowels to size. I made the end of a scroll with wooden squares, sanded to look smooth. The paper I soaked in tea for several minutes and then glued it together with super glue. The writing is just fake squiggles with the superglue to give it a written and shiny look, visible from both sides. Everything is the same black and red, adding to the clean but blank surface that the character portrays. Simple, professional, and ruthless. For Monarch, I really just threw together what I had on hand. 
isn't really a character I play super often, so I didn't want to put a lot of time and money into this costume if gifts and hand-me-downs would work. The coat I bought on Amazon for a Halloween costume several years ago. The sweater was given to me. I like the fancy look of the combination of elegant yet more sophisticated, even more renaissance than medieval. More modern, but still somewhat appropriate and realistic. The crown is a golden laurel wreath that I got for my birthday. It's not exactly the period I was going for, but I'll explain why it still works in a second. The pants are, you guessed it, the same black sweatpants as Messenger. Monarch's entire costume is essentially close but not quite right. The coat is close but not exactly medieval. The sweater is fancy but a bit too modern. The crown is gold but Roman, which isn't exactly medieval either, but in the opposite direction. The whole costume says one thing loud and clear. I'm a king, I think, and that is the place that I want him to be. Real enough, but somewhat unauthentic. Secretly, something isn't quite right. Now that the shell is in place, it's time to make the character come to life. The fifth reason why I think you're here is to figure out how to not only create this character, but temporarily become them, just for a moment. To become something other than yourself, but yet still no different than who you are. Not just where you're at, but also where you want to be. It's exactly the trick to acting. Admittedly, getting into character is not something I have a ton of experience with, but I can still regurgitate what I've heard over the years from other people. To get into character, you have to share the motivation of the character. You must know what they want, not just simply act what you think they're probably feeling. The key here is intention. You need to know what your character wants and how they make decisions. For example, if someone is to punch you in the face, don't act angry. Instead, you need to remember that you're on a mission and have direct orders from his majesty. You've already had a long day of traveling and this character is... this peasant is beneath you, so it's time to draw your sword and eat that son of a- My point here is that you need to understand not just your character's actions, but their intention behind the action. You're doing something. Ask yourself, not what, but why. Answer enough questions and this will start to come naturally. You'll start to really understand your character and this part of yourself that you are displaying for whatever audience. Shift away from saying simple things like, I am a prideful person, and start saying, I am clearly better than everyone. See how this is a different ring to it? One is trying to play to an emotion. Another is trying to play to how you're feeling. Not just an emotion, but all of the emotions that you feel. Or, I am angry with this person. Should turn into, why won't they just listen to me? See, anger is one thing. Right? But why won't they listen to me can be anger as well as frustration, maybe a bit of outrage, maybe an insult. There's so much more depth to it as a phrase than I am angry. If you're feeling ambitious, you can also add an accent to your character. However, be warned, do not do this unless you are actually good at the accent or else it'll just come across as cheesy. Take it from me. They can tell if you're not good at the accent. My recommendation is looking up some kind of how to do a blank accent on YouTube. And once you find enough videos, then you can get the basics down. Once you have the basics, then you have to practice it and refine it. Get it as subtle as possible so that it's as close to your normal voice while still maintaining the distinct accent. In my opinion, and in the opinion of everyone who's ever been tortured by me trying to do an accent, be subtle. Less is more. Do not over-exaggerate for goodness sakes. It will not end well. It'll come across as cheesy, and maybe that's what you're going for. But in most cases, realism is key. What I like to do to really get into character and do an accent well is by imagining myself as either a native speaker that I know in real life, or a character from a TV show or movie that does the accent well, or sometimes even having a catchphrase that can get you into it. Something that's easy to say, that you know how to say, that'll kick it off. Also, I recommend mixing it up from character to character. Not everyone has to be different. You can have some people that are similar, some even exactly the same. But if you try and do the same British accent for every single character, it starts to get old really fast. One example that I have for getting into character is when I'm trying to sing. I imagine myself as either two things. One, a minstrel that's basically just talking the words and not really singing all that much. Like a story, like I'm telling a story, for instance. 
and two is kind of like a, a monk, like a Gregorian chant kind of thing. That's what I'm, when I'm trying to sing, I can imagine myself in like the robes or whatever. I know it's cheesy, but it's what helps me, and maybe there's something that'll help you too. Next step is posture. Big motions for big attention, small motions for simplicity, upright, prim and proper, or hunched for more casual, fast for energetic, slow for calm, and so on and so forth. I consider this part fairly intuitive because that's how I design my characters around. Figure out what I naturally do and put that into the character. Do I like to sit up straight? Is this how I do it? Then it's how the character does it. I pick characters that share my own body language and facial expression and the kind of patterns that I go through. This is yet another reason why I say you should base the character off yourself, is it makes the body language so much easier to do. Trying to create body language or facial expressions that are unnatural to your personality are very difficult, especially with everything else piled on top, trying to think about intention, what you want, where the character, how they would answer the questions that I asked earlier, and then trying to do it against your nature. Impossible. Well, not impossible, but you'd have to be a lot better than I am. Hello, I am Mark. Just Mark. And as I'm guessing, you probably don't care all too much. But, maybe you know a little bit more about me now. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe 10 of you actually know the real Mark in real life. Perhaps 50 or so would like to know the real Mark. Another hundred found it kind of interesting to see just Mark once. And the other a thousand plus just want me to get on with the rest of the video. And honestly, no hard feelings, like I said. Everything within just Mark isn't all that palatable to the masses. And in the end of the day, I'm not any different from you. And this is why I made characters to play. Because I can't give you all of Mark at once, but I can give you little bits and pieces that are easy to understand at a glance. Not everyone wants to take the time to get to know me on a deep emotional level, and I don't blame you. You've got plenty of other things to deal with, and friends of your own. But what I can give you is little bits. I can give you the poet, the soldier, and the king. And even though just Mark might not be super entertaining, I can still give you the pieces that are, and make your life just a little bit better for maybe a few minutes. And honestly, I consider that a success. I can't ask for the world and I'm not going to, but if I can give you three minutes of enjoyment, cool, fine by me. Even if it makes your life brighter by just a small amount, that's all I ask, all I want. My final guess for your unparalleled viewer retention is actually my personal reason for making this video in the first place, and that is the call to greatness. Something about being just Mark wasn't enough for me either. It's not just enough for me to have these wants and desires, but they also need to be shared. I need to strive to make them known somehow. It's not just a journey of playing a fake character, but it's a journey of self-discovery, of self-fulfillment. The better I can understand myself, the better I can fulfill these desires. The things that make me human. The better I can recognize my flaws. The things that make me human. And the better I can use my skills for the betterment of all. Which is a calling I consider higher than human. Even divine. I'll leave you with this. In order to create a character, you must first recognize the character you were created to be.